Ladies and gentlemen, friends, enemies, your holiness. Frenemies. Welcome. Frenemies, they're important. They're a big they're deal. They're important, yeah. Welcome to Infinity Rewatch, uh, a special-ish Infinity Rewatch. Not the main show. This is like a this is a spinoff. This is new and exciting. Yeah, just like us. I'm Andrew Fantasia, and I'm joined by the always handsome, always wonderful, always, always, always. The, the Ryan, Ryan J. Whitehead is here. Yeah. We are live on YouTube now. We are jumping platforms. Oh my God! What wonderful world we live in now where we can do this stuff digitally and you know we're not even the same apartment right now or room. i know yeah because <laughs> otherwise we'd be giving each other germs and stuff i know so oh. usually it's like this nice little intimate thing we're just huddled on your couch under the glare of the fire and we're just talking about like annihilus and thanos and stuff but now no you now know. that couch is 400 miles long <laughs> that's it it feels like 400 miles i don't know i but you know it's funny you bring up a nihilist man i we live in interesting times and uh, we've had some interesting news and it both that makes me sad but it might have big poten potential as well Ooh, and potential is what we want to talk about today for mm -hmm. sure because the sad truth is um and i mean in the grand scheme of things that's not the worst thing that has happened these past couple months by any stretch of the imagination. But if you're an MCU fan, you we're not getting Black Widow in May anymore. No. That's, that's no. not happening, kids. It's um do you remember where you were when you found that out and what you did? Uh, uh I was in this very room. Uh and uh, I mean where else would I be right now? Uh, <laughs> that was test. I was making sure you were obeying the rules. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I, I was in the sky dome <laughs> taking in a ball game. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was uh, I was sitting on this computer and uh, I was reading I was reading on the news that they uh, that they they were pushing it back because I was doing all this work at my desk working from home and uh, yeah I learned the harsh news the harsh truth of it all that uh, it was delayed till November but I am excited to to note that that Falcon and Winter Soldier is still ongoing and it still sets release in August so that's that's going to hold me over, at least for now. I'm very grateful for the Disney Plus stuff right now, dude. It's like, because of the fact that Falcon and Winter Soldier and then like Mandalorian Season 2 as well, that's all been filmed already. Yeah. It's like, they can just, they can finish it and mm -hmm. they can release it and that's not going to be affected by anything, which is great. So we're we're getting our fix a little, even if it's only like six, seven, eight episodes of our fix, that's fine. Yeah. But the the topic of today's discussion is is what has become a phase four. Phase Ooh. four is a different animal now than it was last summer when they announced everything. Yeah. Um, I have here. I'm going to bring it up uh, so I can read off of it and make sure I'm doing this correctly. But I have the um, release calendar of phase four, and uh, it, it's it's different now. It's a very different animal. Uh, I don't know where my browser thing went, but I'm going to find it. And when I do, I'm going to read all about phase four. It's, mm. It might be gone. But uh, essentially, to start off with, Black Widow is in November now. Yes. What do you think? Do you think this is going to change anything, Ryan, about this Black Widow movie? Do you think the movie we would have gotten in May is going to be identical to the one we're getting in November or is something different going to happen now? I think something different can happen. What I think, what I think is that, um, the best way to describe it is that we're going to get maybe a different end credit scene is possible. They can insert one or they can, they can change one. Um, but I don't think in terms of the movie itself, I don't think they're going to add more or take it away. I think that the real, the real thing here is, is that they can maybe now add in something that might impact the story. Uh, you know, like for me, I could just gush right now and say, oh, you can insert Fantastic Four. I don't know how, I don't know why, but you can, because now you have this breadth of time. Um, now, that being said, they ruled out with Black Widow first, and then they said that Falcon and Winter Soldier is also coming out. So how do the two connect, right? 
And we, if we look at, and you know, if you guys have been listening to this podcast that we've been doing, um, we've been looking at the whole phase in, in you know, phase one, phase two in, in order, and they connected the movies as best they could, except for one disconnect, which was um, Guardians uh, kind of took play with, or sorry, uh, Winter Soldier kind of took play with uh, ahead of Guardians, and there was a little bit of a mix up there. But all their end credit scenes connect one story. So how does Black Widow connect with um, with Falcon Winter Soldier? Now, what I think what's going to happen is is that you know you, they're talking about because. I think it's possible with Black Widow that they could be talking about experimenting with the Super Soldier Serum, and they had their first maybe failed attempt with Red Guardian, and maybe Taskmaster could be influenced in some way, because yeah. one story arc I've loved from based on the cartoons that is also based on the comics is that they try to recreate the formula, the Super Soldier formula, but every time they've done it, it's always had a different result. And we have seen hints of that story in... Um, we have seen hints of that story in the first Avengers when uh, they talked about how Banner tried to recreate the super soldier serum, thus creating the Hulk. So I'd, I'd be curious to see if Red Guardian's powers kind of flux. Like he's, he's super strong at one point, um, and then sometimes it just kind of fades off. Or, yeah, like, or maybe it's just he's not as strong as he could be or whatever. Uh, but I would love to see that. I would love to see if there's like these failed experiments, and uh, and then in Falcon and Winter Soldier again, maybe we see something else that's that's going on. Yeah, that show is going to. Um, it, it's still an enigma, right? Because it's mm -hmm. our first MCU show, so we don't know what that's going to look like, what it's going to feel like, how it's going to tie into things. Mm -hmm. um, but Black Widow is because it's such a big jump forward. It really did shuffle all of phase four into an entirely different looking hand of cards. So I'm just quickly going to go over the new release dates for phase four. Okay. And we'll see if we can find some kind of, you know, maybe if, is there a meaning now? Is there a change now? What, what are we looking at in terms of phase four now? So let's start off black widow, as we said, November 6, 2020, and they got the eternals, which we were going to get this year. That is now February 12th, 2021. <sighs> That is now a Valentine's Day. You are taking your Valentine to go watch Black Knight and I forget Salma Hayek's name, uh, fight some aliens, I'm assuming. I don't know. That movie is still mm -hmm. a puzzle to me. Then we got what I'm probably most excited for on this list, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, it's ten times better than Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Single Ring. <laughs> um, that is May 7, 2021. Yeah. That is a heat of the summer movie. Uh, and then just two months after that, July 16th, we are getting the as yet untitled Spider-Man 3, uh, the sequel to Far From Home. Uh, and then still in 2021, on November 5th, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness finally followed on February 18th, 2022. If we're all still alive and kicking, we can go to a cinema and see Thor, Love, and Thunder mm -hmm. in that order. Which is a weird order, I have to admit, if you really think about it. Like, so we have, I think Black Widow is kind of like the, is the end credit movie of the last, the whole, the whole thing. All the phases, everything. I think Black, like they said, they said Spider-Man Far From Home was kind of the, the epilogue of the, uh, of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, I think that Black Widow, it, Black Widow's story is going to be like one massive end credit sequence of, of opening up this huge Pandora's box of, of something we may have missed in the story. Um, now that being said, I don't know, because the thing is her story is really good. The one that they're basing it off of, but with the Marvel formula, they only take like snippets of the comic story and then... Some, using the MCU to a point where it's a very well-established MCU, we're going to see, I think we're going to see a very different story, uh, but it, that will complement what we've seen in the comics and, and where it's going to go from there. Now, that's interesting that you say that because I always looked at this Black Widow movie, and again, I don't know what that comic story is like, but I've always looked mm -hmm. at this movie as being really separate 
from what's going on. Like I, I always imagined I was going to walk into this movie and have a great time, but I wasn't going to get like, like, Oh, here comes Eric Selvig. Like I wasn't going to get like the big crossover cameos that we're used to, like, especially how phase three just kind of shoveled everybody out mm -hmm. in everybody else's movie. I always expected black widow was just going to be like a side story. And I had no idea what to expect from the post credit scene of it, because I figured, is it going to lead into, how do you go from black widow spies leading into the Eternals? Like what, how could that possibly work? I was so baffled by this movie. It was such a question mark for me. Yeah. And now even more so, because it's so far away. Mm -hmm. But then you have this whole other list of movies um, that's been pushed back and changed around and stuff. Uh, Shang-Chi is an interesting one because it was a March movie, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah. I think it got pushed forward just two months or something. It was a mm -hmm. March movie. Now it's coming out right in the middle of summer, uh, which is a tougher crowd. It's, it's tougher to make money in the middle of summer. That's why, you know, he's a new hero. They don't know how his his story uh, is going to fare with crowds, so they they put it in March to be safe. Now he's got tougher competition. I think he's also going up against Fast Nine because that got bumped up to next May, including who knows what else is slated for May twenty twenty one. So, what do you think uh, the chance? Do you think there's a chance that the Shang Chi we would have gotten in March makes? more money, substantially more money than the Shang-Chi we're now getting in May? That's a good question. I, you know, I never even thought about the audience, like in terms of like, if the movie came out in the summer, will it be like a huge blockbuster? I think I think that's irrelevant. I think that personally, that, that conversation is completely irrelevant. Like video games, if a game comes out in the summer, it's a bad idea because no one's going to be inside playing games, but... Unless you're me. Yeah. <laughs> unless, unless you're us. It's too hot in Canada. I don't go outside in the summer. <laughs> but I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, I mean, a gamer is going to buy a good game. So the time, like what season it is, is completely irrelevant. And I think with Shang-Chi, um, it, it feels to me like you're leading the conversation in, in a direction that, you know, are they going to add more? Are they going to change some things? I think that's very possible. But I don't know how big of a change because, again, trying to change the ship and move the ship in a new direction could be a lot of moving parts, right? Like maybe they have a really good plan with Shang-Chi that needs to be like followed through with. I think that they could explore maybe their story a bit more because, again, it depends on how things are going to tie together. Uh, I think Bob Iger and Kevin Feige have confirmed in interviews that, um, you know, you really have to watch the Disney Plus stuff to actually fit, like to get a better understanding of what's going on in the MCU. So to answer your question and kind of bring it back all full around, I don't think it's going to matter. I think that Marvel fans are going to see a Marvel movie. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, if if they're, what they're trying to do is obviously try to bring in new audiences with these very, uh, very diverse characters. And, and Marvel's been continuing to do that with their castings. And, you know, they, they've been trying to bring in different, um, different crowds by bringing in actors who you wouldn't think of. Um, you know, Robert Downey, no one thought of him to be, to be Iron Man. But yet he was such a dramatic actor and he had such a, a you know, a following with his work that people wanted to see what he was going to do with that character. You know, same goes for Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, Doctor Strange. He's bringing in a whole different audience. So Shang-Chi is going to be an interesting choice because we have this actor from Kim's Convenience. And, uh, you know, and what we're seeing is, is like uh, we're seeing this new film and new tone, new feel. And so people are going to want to see that. People, despite what's going on in Marvel, people are going to want to see that. With The Eternals, we're getting such a crazy cast of comedians, writers, uh, writers who are actors. Uh, we're seeing, you know, dramatic actors. We're seeing, you know, these fantasy character, uh, fantasy uh, actors. So we're getting all these different audiences here. So um, I think Saint Chi is going to do really, really well. I think it's going to really have a deep impact in terms of pulling in new audiences. Um, and I think for Marvel fans, they're going to go see it because, again, we're finally getting the Mandarin we've always wanted. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm so no, I'm disappointed. Mandarin should have been a weird guy with a tattoo <laughs> on his chest. <laughs> Hashtag that's my Mandarin. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've always wanted him to be played by uh, what's his name? 
Yeah, that's when I think Mandarin, when I think ancient Chinese warlord with magic rings, I think British blonde guy with a tattoo and zero rings. <laughs> that's where my mind goes. Yeah, or I think of a, I think of a, a, an Oscar award winning actor to play a comedic actor <laughs> playing a Chinese ancient warlord. Um, but oh, like, boy. again, where's, I think there's a theme here we're not seeing here. I'm going to pass this back to you. I'm actually going to serve it back to you. Think about it. So we have Black Widow. Black Widow was this redemption story. She, it seems like she comes from a very dark, angry background and she turned good. And I think she believes in these second chances that she has with these characters. Cause I mean, I think there's a beautiful scene that, that had a lot of criticism, but if you look at Avengers Age of Ultron, I think it's a beautiful example of her relationship with Bruce is that, is that understanding that people can redeem themselves, even though they're struggling with this, this anger that's like, you know, hard to suppress. And so I think what we're seeing with this movie and then what we may see with Shang-Chi uh, and what we will probably definitely see with Eternals based on my studies is I think we're actually going to bleed into uh, a Secret Wars slash Civil War uh, re a turnaround. Yeah. And I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. So, you know, based on the themes you're seeing, uh, are, are do you think we're going to see a battle of good and evil? at the ultimate battle of good and evil because Thanos was talking about balance. So what mm -hmm. better way to bring balance than good and evil, right? Like the struggle. Right. And secret war is something that has always, in my mind, that's like the next big Avengers event. Like the only one that I know of as a not really huge comic reader that I think like, Ooh, that's what I want to see. Um, Cause I always think of, you know, the, the Spider-Man cartoon where they did the secret wars and I remember those those 90s toys where everybody had a shield and the shield was like holographic and that was all the Secret Wars toys and everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom played a big part, at least in the cartoon where Secret Wars was concerned. I also know if I remember right, that's where Spidey got his black suit in the comics. So there was a lot of lore, a lot of juicy goodness in the lore of Secret War that kind of spun out and branched off into all these other different marvel things was that where feige was headed already we don't know we don't know where he was headed but i i'm fascinated by the fact that right now there's this we're, we're inside this gray zone um or rather not me Let, let's let's talk about kevin here kevin's kevin feige's inside this gray zone right now where no cameras are being rolled nothing is happening everything has frozen everything has just come to a stop now black widow was pretty much done it was ready to roll. Maybe they were putting some little finishing touches, but it was ready to rock and roll. Eternals, I think I could be wrong. I think they were done principal photography, right? I think they were just working on visual, uh, yeah, visuals at this just, point. Um, Cause I feel like that's a visuals heavy movie. So I feel like they would have been done photography a long time ago. And now they're just, you know, working on the post-production stuff. And we know that Shang-Chi was being filmed. We don't know how far along it was, but it was being filmed. So, you have at least two movies that could be finished right now in this gray zone completed without needing to break quarantine rules and everybody, you know, get the editors at their offices, finish up the movie and they're, and they're ready. Shang-Chi obviously needs more filming and the other ones are still in pre-production. So if I'm Kevin Feige right now and I'm living in this gray zone, like how can I use this time to my advantage for the most benefit for the MCU. I have all this time that I can't go out and make stuff. So I can only make stuff in the privacy of my own home. I can write, I can plot things out. How am I doing this for the benefit of MCU? So that as soon as we're able to, I can be like, okay, go, we're back out. We're ready. Here's what we're doing. If I have to make changes to Shang-Chi because of an idea I thought of, we can do it right away. And I'm hoping that that's, the way he's thinking right now. I'm hoping he's sitting down. Maybe he's calling his team and being like, what do you guys think of this idea? Hey, and initially we thought of having the Fantastic Four in this movie, but what if we now move them here so we get them there faster and we can, like, how much of his initial plan has changed or has nothing changed but these release dates? Um, that just as a writer thinking of living in that gray area where that's all I can do is fine tune stuff. Mm -hmm. It just makes me think like, what is he doing? What kind of 
crazy things is he doing? And would he tell us about any of them in the middle of this? Or would he just kind of keep quiet? The only thing I've heard from him lately is they did that little thing where they just basically confirmed that Captain Marvel 2 is coming out in 2022. Mm -hmm. Um, And we don't even know if that counts as phase four or not, but that's apparently a movie that is, it's got a release date, so it's getting ready to be made. If, If you're in that position and you live in this gray zone, Ryan, what are you doing with your time I think again, I and I, I would love to just like I would love to be in those meetings with Kevin Feige right now because you got to think, you know, Kevin Feige was in a tight position heading into this whole uh, world event that we're in right now, um, and this guy's playing catch up, man, because you know it got to a point, it escalated to a point where Spider Man almost fell through because, like, as an MCU character, because Sony wanted Feige and he was too busy. So mm-hmm. now they worked out a deal so that, you know, Feige could participate and help him out and everything. Uh, now, again, this is all based on what I've read, so I could be wrong, but that's my understanding. And if I'm Feige now, I have unlimited time. Like, sure, I sh- I'm under the pressure that they could lift this isolation thing any minute and I have to get right back to work and get productions going. But... I now have ample time to have meetings with writers, directors, and and just storytellers and like get them together and finally get this roadmap going. Like really, instead of being in a reactive position, being like, okay, this movie goes here, this movie goes here because I see it going this way and this way and this way. I now have the time to really build out an in-depth story that I want to tell with my fellow directors and storytellers and writers to give you the audience a story that you are going to love and want. Um, you know, and and I like where your head's at. Like now I have time to fit in the Fantastic Four without feeling forced or rushed. I have the time to really create a genuine approach. Um, and on top of that, same question goes with X-Men, right? X-Men's, you know, X-Men, some of the best stories that, that really have brought in a lot of audiences are just waiting to be like retold or told in a new way or stories that we haven't even thought of that that are really could be really well done. Um, and so now I have the time to really flesh it out. I mean, I could, I, I, I'm really trying to hold myself back from going into like an epically super long rant to distract people. But, <laughs> but I will ask you first, and that is where do you think it's going? Like in terms of what is the what is the Thanos is trying to get the stones version of this next story arc? Yes, you could talk about now the rules of it is is you can I want you to talk about the plot in terms of little like little plots you want to see and then the Thanos story that's going to tie them all together. Okay, well, little plots I want to see. That's that's great. I like that. Um, mm-hmm. In Shang-Chi, I definitely want to see a lot of really kick-ass kung fu. Okay. Um, but like Marvel style, so like fun stuff. And I, I want that story to be really, really interesting. I want the Mandarin to be the best villain of Phase 4. I think there's a very real chance he could be. But I, that's that's what I'm hoping and praying for. I want everybody to walk out of that movie being like, oh, my God, the Mandarin was so cool. Uh, he was worth the wait. Um, I want the story to move in a place where, okay, we don't have Iron Man anymore. We don't have Captain America. We have everybody else. Um, So now what is going to be a tough challenge because we don't have them? And I I want to, as much as I love the idea of legacy and those characters leaving legacy, I really want to try to steer some of the plot lines away from, oh, I used Stark technology to do this. Like I loved Mysterio, but his his Stark technology origin of his of his supervillain persona was cool. But now that we're moved into Phase Four, I want different origins. Now I, I want because if everything just becomes well, I found this Stark suit, so I modified it, and now I'm the Scorpion. Grr, that it, it becomes a little too copy paste. So I want them to move away from that. I want them to get more cosmic, which it sounds like they're doing, and get some more. Uh, cosmic, weird, out there, spacey reasons for all these characters to come to Earth. Um, 
and I would like it to culminate with Secret Wars because that would be great. I don't know really the ins and outs of that story enough to figure out how they would get there, but I think ending with Secret Wars is big enough to merit that being the end of phase six, if you will. Phase mm -hmm. six ends with the Secret Wars. Um, but in, in the interim of that, if we are getting the Fantastic Four, an Avenger-sized threat. I mean, Galactus is the most supersized threat there is. Mm -hmm. So if that could be like somewhere in the middle, if, if that's like the end of phase five, I'm down for that. I like it. I like it. I mean, I agree with you. I, I, I agree with you. I think so. I'm going to throw in I'm going to throw in my my thoughts here, my pennies. No, well, nickels now because we don't do pennies. Oh. Um, I'm going to throw in my sense here. Uh, so what I'm thinking in terms of plot lines is a little more um, a little more detailed, a little more detailed comic book wise. What I'm hoping for or what I want to see plot wise is, first of all, I want to see uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier dealing with the Sokovia Accords escalating to a new civil war. And while they're doing their hero stuff, they're encountering weirder things, similar to what linear to what we saw in Avengers: Age of Ultron, where like they see these mutants, if you will, um, and and they're on the run from the government. You know, like you just see and you start to see escalations of you know um, escalations of. Uh, uh, of people being like, oh, super powered people are everywhere now. You know, we have a, we have a kid, you know, very similar to the introduction of X-Men. We have a kid who can walk through walls, right? Mm -hmm. And like talk, start talking about that. And, uh, and so I want them to like push up that fear, like, like news clips of like, oh, we saw, uh, we saw a guy with claws coming out of his hands. And then you see like him at a bar, like, you know, like uh, uh, Wolverine at a bar, like freaking out kind of thing. And and Falcon is just watching the news, and and my understanding is, uh, his story, Falcon's story, is like living up to a new Captain America that everyone can relate to. That's that's the Anthony Mackie's uh, said his approach to Falcon now, now that he's like the new Captain America, and I want to see the mutants really screw screw things up like really take the world to a very insecure place where the government's going to have to make the Sokovia accords like a registration thing and then we got the mutant registration act or like the the superhero registration act right and i i want to see that escalate i really do and then the next plot line uh so through that plot line i then i want to see the slow introduction of the x-men and so um, obviously with the talk about mutants, um, have like someone like Dr. Hank McCoy, you know, they, they, this is before he becomes the beast, have, have him come out and be like, oh, Dr. Hank McCoy, what do you feel about mutagenics? And then bring up the, the topic of mutants, like that now that, that we're talking about superpowered individuals, like there are, there is potential for mutation and then have this, have this discussion about it. And then through that process, you know, we get all these new, new characters that could come out of the woodwork, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then through that plot line, uh, <laughs> this is a very layered story, guys, so just bear with me on this one. So plot line number two would be is that um, this multiverse event, uh, Doctor Strange is going through the madness of it. Yeah. Uh, so what, what he's going to see is uh, a force of nature slowly destroying other worlds and he knows that there's this constant so this this could happen to their verse and through that he meets captain britain who is a protector of the multiverse and uh and then they they realize through their adventures that something as big is going to happen to their verse that they need to figure out and so he comes back and and then so uh benjamin braddock captain britain is a sibling to uh, the brother to Psylocke. So Psylocke will work with the X-Men, start slowly bringing that group into the whole fold. So there's a lot of layers to that. So that's, that's like a couple plot lines there. But you, then uh, through this, there's a secret war that happens that becomes the battle of good and evil. I think Doctor Strange uh, is going to start really exploring through different worlds what, dif what makes people different. Because we saw in the first... 
So in the first Doctor Strange, he talked about using time to to fix something, and his villain uh, or his his um, uh, oh my god, what's the word? His uh, antagonist Frenemy. antagonist uh, was was uh, Baron Mordo, and he was talking about the check always comes due when you start messing with the laws of nature, right? Like you cannot, but. Strange felt justified in what he needed to do to save the world. So now I think Doctor Strange is really going to really going to challenge himself to understand what is good. What is good? Like what what defines someone as good versus bad? And then that story and plot is going to lead through some really cool stuff with the Eternals and I think it's going to lead through um uh, a story of like just like yeah just good versus evil which creates kind of the secret war subplot and the result is of the secret wars is that they figure out what's good and bad and that leads to uh the moment where galactus is knocking on earth's front door uh, i'm so excited i just want this quarantine to end so you can watch the movies right now <laughs> I know, oh, I know. It's it's like this is like my favorite story. Now I kind of like sped up a little bit because it's again it could I could really go on forever about like how the hows and whys. But even still, what I'd love to see is like not only that is like through the X Men story. I want to see like Days of Future Past, where they've they've seen the future and they they like they may have seen like they may have seen Galactus coming and they think they can change it. Right, and then you kind of got that X Men cartoon where they play with Days of Future Past events a little bit, and then Bishop has to keep going back through time and try to get the X Men on board of what's about to happen. That it doesn't matter, like the, this, all this stuff is not doesn't matter because Galactus is going to come, and like, and then you know, thus you kick in the Fantastic Four. Like it could all tie together so well. Oh yeah, um, I I think it would be imagine if like. This is crazy, right? <laughs> Batch of crazy, but like, imagine Galactus is like, "No, I'm eating your Earth, whether you like it or not." So everybody on Earth has to leave and go to Multiverse Earth. Oh, so now, now there's two of everyone on this Earth. I would Probably. love to see that. I would love to see that. I mean, there's a lot of talks that Galactus is the main villain, as it is. Like they, they. Marvel confirmed that there's going to be two main villains that drive the story. My theory is is it's Doctor Doom and Galactus, and then the two main stories is, is you got Galactus is coming, but you also have the Secret Wars where Doctor Doom essentially takes over the world and makes the world under his rule kind of thing. So it's very possible you can do those stories. Um, yeah. I mean, it, again, as a as a Marvel nerd, it's sky's the limit at this point. Like, yeah. but what I need. What I need is I need Doom, I need Fantastic Four, um, and I need the X Men. There's so many good stories that you could talk about. I know you just it's I, my, I it's need my them. Of all the X Men, right there. You need them though. I think there's so many Claremont stories that they haven't scratched enough of the surface with that they could really explore and give us the X Men that we finally like really want. We got. You know first. who deserves to be done well? What? Jubilee. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, I would love to. And uh, actually, I was I was reading. Um, I was reading. Uh, there's a fan. There's a, there's a fan list of MCU casting, and they said they wanted Aquafina to play uh, Jubilee. Cool, I'm down. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so like, I mean, there, we could we could go on about casting all day. Uh, and we but, will. <laughs> we will soon. Uh, there we go. But uh, we will. We will. Um, and what I will say though is, with the Eternals, there is an interesting story that I'm gonna that I'm thinking of that plays on the messaging of good versus evil, and the concept of it, uh, because Black Knight plays an interesting role where he's kind of he's kind of a man. He's kind of like Captain America. He's a man out of time. Like he's straight from medieval times, but he he's like he can't. He's an immortal, like he can't die. The sword, the sword is a curse and it doesn't allow him to die unless he dies like a super heroic way, which is impossible because he's like super good. Um, and he can't like, he can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna give up and let you kill me kind of thing. But it's kind of like a weird curse thing, but he also falls in love with Cersei who is played by Astrid, um, which is gonna play an interesting relationship thing. 
Uh, and I'm curious to see like this Highlander story arc, if you will, mm. and what role it's going to play as like, cause like if a man lives that long and goes through so many battles and he knows these Eternals, if you will, or if, if he does, um, like, wouldn't you have such a bleak look on like these meaningless battles? Like, what's the point, right? Like, what's the point? Look at all those millions of bad timelines he saw. In the Infinity War. Like, <laughs> right? Like, he could have seen he could have seen so much. Like, he could have seen Infinity War. He's seen lots of wars and plagues and everything. Like, he could be a really bleak dude. So, I'm curious to see what kind of story they're gonna do. There's a great again a great '90s run. Um, and so I'm curious to see if they're going to do that story, but it looks like they are because I mean they have the Cersei uh, Black Knight love interest thing going on, and they <laughs> they do become Avengers at some point as well. So I don't know what they're going to do, but I really feel there's going to be a big theme of good versus evil here. And I think Shang Chi and Mandarin, the way that role is going to play out, is its will, like the will to make the difference, the will to fight. Right, because Sang Chi is just like he's just the, the ultimate martial artist, and I think that he's going to prove like physically and visually that like you just have to like you just have to overcome it in the best way you can. So I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. Well, he's not as good a martial artist as Bakudo, the most totally not villainous <laughs> martial artist in the whole world. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, cool. so so the other interesting question is: is we have Spider Man? I'm curious to see. Mm -hmm. Like Spider Man's a public enemy now, so I'm curious to see where that story is going to go. Like, you can't go to school. You know? No, he, Jam Jameson's on his ass now. J exactly, Jameson's onto him. Uh, but the world is on, like the world is onto him, right? And then we got the Sokovia Accord. So how is that all going to play into a role in the cinematic universe for Spider Man, right? Right. Not only that, we also have another Black Panther coming, and I was talking to my brother, um, and we'll have to have him on this now that we can accomplish what we've just did today, um, but we'll have to have him on this because he was talking about um, what you can do with Black Panther because his Black Panther story can really branch out and really announce new things. Like, you can have him talk about Atlantis and ha introduce Namor, because mm -hmm. and they've hinted at it, I think twice. So they've hinted at Shield is obviously on to something going on in the Atlantic Ocean, and then you have Wakanda announced that there was an earthquake underwater, and they're close to the Atlantic. So something's going on in the Atlantic. So Black Panther could easily introduce, um, could easily introduce uh, Namor, or. On the other hand of the things, uh, Black Panther could easily introduce Fantastic Four because there was an, there was a story arc where he has to enlist their help. So uh, now at the t for that story, it was to enlist their help to defeat Ulysses Claw. Um, so obviously that's not going to take place anymore. But like that story is an option. So you know Black Panther has the potential to do a lot of cool story arcs. And I don't know, I remember my brother mentioned another one that was just like equally as mind blowing, but those are two big ones already. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, and that's sort of, that's where I wanted to kind of bring this video to a close is to talk about something that, because right now we have something that we've never had before in the other phases, which is we have our, our timeline of phase four. And then we have a bunch of other movies that are just kind of like dust in the wind right now. We don't know what they are or where they are or who they are because okay we know captain marvel 2 2022 all right fine we know blade is a thing we don't know when or where or how or why but blade is a thing right we know guardians volume 3 is coming you know we we gotta sit tight because uh, apparently suicide squad really needed a sequel <laughs> but, but guardians volume 3 is coming um, we know, I think somebody confirmed not too long ago that there will be a third Ant-Man movie. Yes, actually, no, there is a third one that they are working on and they got the writer from Rick and Morty to do Beautiful. it. You're, that's so perfect. Oh, I know, right? Oh, man. And then this Black Panther thing was the final one. And I'm glad you brought it up because that for me was, I remember, I don't know where it was or when it happened. It was after the the Comic-Con last year, because obviously Black Panther wasn't part of that Phase 4 lineup. But at some point since then, 
there was some kind of announcement where they're like, hey, here's the logo for Black Panther 2. And it was literally just Black Panther with a Roman numeral 2, which I love because I love that all the Marvel movies have like different ways of titling their things. And this one is just like a nice, sexy Roman numeral. Like, I love Roman numerals. So I didn't dream that, right? That actually happened. They said, here's the logo. And it said Black Panther 2. Yep, That's really- it actually happened. Yeah. Okay. Happened. Yep. So because they have a logo and everything, I just find it so interesting that there's a logo for this movie that doesn't have any kind of synopsis any kind of release date anything like nothing about it we just it's like here's the logo it's such an odd thing to announce so all those movies i mentioned are just kind of floating in in a void right now and they don't really have any place to stick um are all of these movies ryan captain marvel 2 black panther 2 uh ant-man 3 Guardians 3 and Blade. Are these all phase four movies? If not, what are they? I think Feige is gonna pull I think Feige is gonna pull a Phil Spencer at this point. Not because I just worship the two of them as bi- both creative business people, but like <laughs> just as like fanatics themselves. I think they're gonna just like I think Kevin Feige, hear my words right now, guys. This is an Infinity Rewatch prediction. He's going to come out and say that phases are no longer a thing. Wow. I think he's going to do it. I th- it makes sense. It just it makes sense to me because the whole point of the phases was to establish an MCU, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And I, I, you know, challenge me on it. But think about it, right? Like the whole idea of phase one through phase th- four now that we're on is to establish that there's a cinematic universe and dr strange and eternals stuff like that that means like we have a world already like we have we have a world and now we have a multiverse and so with that being said i think at one point he's gonna be like guys it's not about phases anymore i there's there there's some underlying messaging that's helping me kind of secure that thought process but i think he's gonna mic drop moment d22 next year he's gonna be like guys i'm you know someone's gonna ask him like oh like what's for the next phase he's gonna be like there's no more phases anymore just like phil spencer came out and said there's no more xbox generations anymore i'm gonna not do a a console generation i'm just gonna come out with stuff and i think that's the same thing with kevin feige at this point it doesn't matter it doesn't Mm -hmm. We're going to come out, he's just going to come out with these crazy stories and somehow just connect them to this bigger world. Very much like how Netflix, Netflix series was affected by MCU is that, yes, it's one story, but it's a side story that may not have a progression to what's going on in the ultimate phase run, run thing. You could have, you know, you could have uh, easily have a side story where like, spider-man's on the run and then have a side story where daredevil you know comes in and just the whole this whole epic story is around you know matt murdoch trying to prove peter parker's innocent while the two of them are working together on a completely irrelevant thing and not realize that they're you know superheroes and that completely irrelevant thing is taking down the kingpin he's back he's back please be back uh no i think you could that's a great point man because right now my head i'm trying to think of like where do these fit in where do these five completely important movies because everybody's looking forward to all five of these movies but completely unannounced ish movies where do they fit in in phase four and i think that you're you're onto something there i think the idea of phase four is a shackle that we got to get rid of and that makes it easier to just be like well you know after love and thunder the next movie is going to be black panther 2 what phase is that? Who cares? The next movie is going to be Black Panther. It doesn't too. matter. It doesn't right. matter. It doesn't... What's important is that we have the Infinity Saga, yep. and now we have the Christine Everhart is a Nihilist Saga. And however many movies are in that, maybe it's the same number. Maybe it's twenty-two or whatever it was. Maybe it's fifty <sighs> movies. But that's this new saga, and you just we're going to ride that saga till they kill Christine, and then we move on to saga number three. <laughs> but yeah, I think that makes it easier. Think about like like. I like honestly I will not be surprised if Kang comes into play, Kang the Conqueror. I will not be surprised if Galactus comes into play because these two characters have a very similar theme, you know, mm-hmm. which is time the end of time really is what it is. 
Like you can you can look at time in different ways, but when your time comes, your time comes. Like it's similar yeah. as that. Um, but I mean, you know, X Men. We we're gonna see we're gonna see something X Men. We're gonna see X Men explore time in some way, shape, or form. It's gonna happen. X Men stories all have to deal with time and some universe ending force. That's it. Will we see another Phoenix Saga movie? I doubt it. I, I don't, hope not. I don't I'm done. think so. I don't think so. I haven't even watched Dark Phoenix, but Chris, Chris Claremont was very clear about what went down with that movie. And I, I totally agree with him. Is like, you have to do it in like a trilogy because mm-hmm. you have to fully go from innocence to super good to super evil. And, and that's the beauty of the MCU is you have the room to do that. You have the room to breathe. There's there's so much room to do Days of Future Past where you could, you know, Bishop becomes this time traveler and he tries to fix these problems and and, and realizing inevitably that he can't. Mm-hmm. So and then Cable comes into play and then totally change and you could do you could even do uh, kind of a Mandalorian esque story where you know you see Bishop in the movie do all the stuff and because everything's connected now. Cable can have a side story with Deadpool and like do like their version where you see them interloping between the timeline, right? Like yeah. you could do so, so much. And so that's why I don't think phases are going to be a thing much longer. I think he's going to say it. there's something that's going to happen within phase four that's going to be like, you know what? You know, the bottle, the bottle's open now. Like that's it. There's no yeah. more phases. We're, we're deep into it now. Like I love it that is. idea so much, man. I love it so much. Like, yeah. just, like plain and simple, guys. The Infinity Saga. There, there are twenty-three movies. Now you're getting this saga, and mm. it's twenty-six movies. Uh, doesn't matter what phase they're in anymore. Just here you go. There, there's this one, and then that, and that, and then mm. that. Oh, that's the world I want to live in. Uh, and hopefully, that's the world we'll be living in within a year. Hopefully, you know that would be nice. Uh, I just hope that a year mm. from now we can see Shang Chi. And we'll have seen Eternals and Black Widow and all will be right with the world. Um, but until then, we're going to keep on Infinity Rewatching. Uh, we have more episodes coming down the pipeline for you that we recorded many moons ago. Um, I think uh, we still have yet to release our episodes of Phase 2. So mm-hmm. you've got all of Phase 2 to look forward to. We have special episodes that we're going to be making. And depending on how long this lockdown lasts, we're going to make a couple more like this. Yes. We're, we're talking on our computers and shit. It's going to be great. Yes. But uh, this was fun. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank was... you so much, Andrew. Dream come true. Always. Always, right? So until next time, keep reading, keep watching, keep infinity That's not a verb yet. Uh, don't trust anybody you meet named Christine Everhart. They are lying to you. They are a bug monster. Uh, and nothing left to say, but have a marvelous day. Oh, yeah. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.